fields are white and the workers are few, but the Lord of the harvest is faithful and true. Good morning and welcome to my Father's Place. This is the study of the book of Isaiah called Return to the Lord. And we're going to go through Isaiah 37, 1 through 20, and I'll be bringing some other scriptures in as usual. But I'll show you them as we go, and Jeff will do the flags on the video. I thank God for him. We minister together, and it's just glorious. So if I were going to give today's teaching a title, it would be the response of the obedient. When the enemy lies and threatens and all of those things, some people are fearful and some people panic, but the obedient just go humbly before their Lord. And they say, oh, Lord, look at what the enemy has said about you. So that's what we'll see today. The response of the obedient. You see, there's, there is this different response from those who love and obey and cling to the Lord and trust him in all things than those who are disobedient, who show that they do not love him, that they do not obey him, and therefore they do not trust him. So I'm going to teach 37, 1 through 20 this week, and I'll finish it up with the Lord's response to Hezekiah next week. I tell you the truth. He will not respond. The Lord will not respond to sinners who try to mimic the actions of those who love and obey and trust him and humbly come before him. They will, they will mimic it. But the Lord knows every heart. Nothing is hidden from the one with whom we have to do. From Hebrews 4.13. There's one response. There's one thing he will respond to from a sinning believer. And that is a prayer of repentance and a crying out for him to fill them with his Holy Spirit. Luke 11.13. He will surely respond to that from a believer. How do I know? He responded to me when I cried out. He responded to me when I repented. So I'll read down 1 through 20 of Isaiah 37 as soon as I pray, and we will get into it. Oh, Lord, you are so kind that you would take such a one as me who was so disobedient and rebellious against you and give me an obedient heart that loves you and obeys you and trusts you in all things. It is by this that I stand, and by this you will make every believer who believes stand also. Jesus this message is as much for your church as it was for your people in the days of Isaiah. May there be ears to hear, and may they heed what they hear. Holy Spirit, have your way with what you have shown me. In the name of Jesus, amen. So, I'll read down. And when King Hezekiah heard it, that is the bad report of the rab sheikh's threats and lies and blasphemy against the Lord. When King Hezekiah heard it, he tore his clothes, covered himself with sackcloth, and entered the house of the Lord. Then he sent Eliakim, who was over the household with Shebna the scribe, and the elders of the priests, covered with sackcloth, to Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amoz. They said to him, Thus says Hezekiah, This day is a day of distress, rebuke, and rejection. For children have come to birth, and there is no strength to deliver. Perhaps the Lord your God will hear the words of the Rabshake, 
whom his master, the king of Assyria, has sent to reproach the living God and will rebuke the words which the Lord your God has heard. Therefore, offer a prayer for the remnant that is left. So the servants of King Hezekiah came to Isaiah. Verse 6, Isaiah said to them, Thus you shall say to your master, Thus says the Lord, Do not be afraid because of the words that you have heard with which the servants of the king of Assyria have blasphemed me. Behold, I will put a spirit in him so that he will hear a rumor and return to his own land, and I will make him fall by the sword in his own land. Verse 8, then the Rabshake returned and found the king of Assyria fighting against Libna, for he had heard that the king had left Lachish. When he heard them say, considering Kirhaka, king of Cush, he has come out to fight against you. When he heard it, he sent messengers to Hezekiah, saying, Thus you shall say to Hezekiah, king of Judah, Do not let your God in whom you trust deceive you, saying, Jerusalem will not be given into the hand of the king of Assyria. Behold, you have heard what the kings of Assyria have done to all the lands, destroying them completely. So will you be spared? Did the gods of those nations which my fathers have destroyed deliver them, even Gozan and Haran and Rezeph and the sons of Eden who were in Telassar? Where is the king of Hamath, the king of Arpad, the king of the city of Sepharvaim? and of Hena and Iva. Then Hezekiah took the letter from the hand of the messengers and read it, and he went up to the house of the Lord and spread it out before the Lord. Hezekiah prayed to the Lord, saying, O Lord of hosts, the God of Israel who is enthroned above the cherubim, you are the God, you alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth. You have made heaven and earth. Incline your ear, O Lord, and hear. Open your eyes, O Lord, and see, and listen to all the words of Sennacherib, who sent them to reproach the living God. Truly, O Lord, the kings of Assyria have devastated all the countries and their lands, and have cast their gods into the fire, for they were not gods, but the work of men's hands, wood and stone, so they have destroyed them. Now, O Lord, our God, deliver us from his hand that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you alone, O Lord, are God. That's an awesome scene. Can you imagine him just spreading out these threats before the Lord and saying, look, you are God over all. Let that truth be seen by delivering us from Assyria. So he did the same thing in verse 1 of 37. He did the same thing as his emissaries. When his emissaries heard blasphemous words against the Lord, they tore their clothes, went back, reported, and King Hezekiah, when he heard it, tore his clothes because they had blasphemed the God of heaven, the one true God. How much clothes tearing is there in the church today? Blasphemies even come from the pulpit. Says the Lord. And he covered himself with sackcloth. Again, that is a sign of submission and humility. And he entered the house of the Lord. Again, submission to the Lord. He didn't go to Egypt, to ask for help from them, as his father had, King Ahaz. He went to the Lord because he was obedient to the Lord. He was obedient. He trusted, obeyed, loved, and clung to him. Listen to this description of Hezekiah from 2 Kings 18.5 through 6. He trusted in the Lord, the God of Israel so that after him there was none like him among all the kings of Judah, nor among those who were before him. For he clung to the Lord. He did not depart from following him, but kept his commandments, which the Lord had commanded Moses. 
trusted him, clung to, did not depart from following, kept his commandment. So Hezekiah was in a position to be absolutely sure, a spiritual position to be absolutely sure that the Lord would deliver Jerusalem. So his actions were not actions of fear, but actions of submission and humility as he came before the Lord in the house of the Lord. He trusted the word of the Lord spoken through Isaiah. He knew Isaiah was the servant of the Lord. In Isaiah 35, 4, say to those with anxious heart, take courage, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. The recompense of God will come, but he will save you. So I know the Lord's character. He has shown it to me. I wouldn't know it any other way. And I myself have experienced his deliverance from what the enemy told me was impossible to receive deliverance from. An incurable disease, multiple sclerosis. I've spoken of it before. I have seen his work, and he also delivered me from my sin nature and filled me with his spirit. So I trust in him implicitly, and I obey him, and he has made it since my sin nature is dead and gone, so that I can obey him always. It's wonderful. That's his cure. Now, for you. I make a guarantee that if you ask him to make you right before him, he will do it. He will make your heart clean. He will take your sin nature. He will do it. And you will be delivered from slavery to sin. That is a guarantee. He will deliver you from all else that comes when you are right before him, just as Hezekiah was right before him, and he was delivered, and all of his people. Therefore, O sinning believer, repent. I cannot speak this just of this time because it applies to you as well. Turn from your sin. Your Father in heaven is ready and waiting. All you have to do is ask him for the Holy Spirit. The most important deliverance of all. And that leads to the deliverance from all of the enemy's attempts and threats. And you will identify his lies immediately, beloved. You won't fall for his falder all, for his junk, for his foolish words, for his empty words. No matter what threats and lies and blasphemies of God Satan throws at you, you will stand. You will stand steadfast and immovable. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Verses 2 through 4, Hezekiah is sending Eliakim and elders of the priests covered with sackcloth to Isaiah. And he sends them with a message. Hezekiah believed the Lord would deliver Jerusalem. That's why he sent his emissaries to him instead of to Egypt. So, send them to Isaiah, and his message was, Thus says Hezekiah, this is a day of distress, rebuke, and rejection, for children have come to birth, and there is no strength to deliver. Is that a statement of lack of faith? No. Keep listening. What he was saying was Jerusalem has no strength to deliver itself. 
just as I had no strength to deliver myself, Jeff had no strength to deliver himself. None of us has any strength, no matter what we go to, man's wisdom, man's ways, whatever we chase after, the ways of the world. Those won't deliver you. You have only one deliverer. And what you need to do in order for him to hear your cries is get right with him, O oh believer. Have him change your heart entirely. And he will, if you ask him. The fortified cities of Judah had been seized by the Assyrian army. That's from 36.1. So there was just a remnant of the Lord's people inside the walls of Jerusalem and in a few outlying cities that were not fortified cities that had not yet been taken by Assyria. So... Ahaz had run to Egypt. Ahaz had run to everyone but the Lord because he was sinning against the Lord. You see, when you're sinning against the Lord, you'll run to everything but the Lord rather than repent. It makes no sense, but I'll tell you the truth. I did that for 42 years. Have you depended on and trusted in the Lord to set you free from slavery to sin, O believer? Have you believed Jesus' promise in John 8, 31 through 36, that he will do it? He will set you free indeed. Not free to sin whenever you want to, because you go to church on Sunday. But free from slavery to sin. Satan will dangle things. You will not go after them. He is a deliverer. The Lord is. For those who love and obey and trust in him. And cling to him like glue. I trust his words in Isaiah 66, 9. Shall I bring to the point of birth and not give delivery? These are rhetorical questions. Of course not, says the Lord. Shall I bring to the point of birth and not give delivery, says the Lord? Or shall I, who gives delivery, shut the womb? I'm the one who delivers. Am I going to turn around and shut the womb so that child cannot come out? Am I not going to deliver you? Of course I will. If you have repented and turned, returned to me, O believer, says your God. So for that reason, because Jerusalem could not deliver herself, Hezekiah asked Isaiah to pray for a word from the Lord. He said, perhaps the Lord your God, Isaiah, will hear the words of the rab sheikh, whom his master, the king of Assyria, has sent to reproach the living God and will rebuke the words which the Lord your God, Isaiah, has heard. Therefore, offer a prayer for the remnant that is left. He, as I say, refused to rely on Egypt for help or on any other source. Hezekiah knew the Lord had promised to deliver, and he believed. The Lord's promise. Because he knew the Lord would deliver and he believed the Lord's promise, Hezekiah's message to Isaiah continued. Now, in my NAS Bible, it says, Perhaps Isaiah, the Lord your God, will hear the words of the Rabshake. But that's a bad translation of that word. When I looked for the original, Hebrew to English, it was for this reason. Because Hezekiah trusted in, relied upon, loved and obeyed the Lord and did not go running after anyone else but cried out to the Lord for deliverance. For this reason, Isaiah, the Lord your God will hear the words of the Rabshake whom his master, the king of Assyria, has sent to blaspheme, that's what reproach means, defame the name of 
the living God. The living God, Hezekiah knows the Lord is alive and well and the only true God. And will rebuke the words which the Lord your God has heard. Therefore, offer a prayer for the remnant that is left, that is those in the city of Jerusalem and in the outlying cities that were not fortified cities that had not yet been captured. So the Lord had already heard the threats and lies of the enemy. The words which the Lord your God has heard will rebuke the Lord's which your God has heard. Yeah, the Lord your God. Yeah, he already heard them. He always hears the threats and lies of the enemy. He always hears the blasphemy of the enemy. The enemy can't do anything. Satan can't do anything but lie, threaten, and blaspheme the Lord, saying he can't help you. He is a liar and the father of lies, and there is no truth in him. That's from John 8, verse 44. Now, Hezekiah was asking for a word for the remnant. But he humbly asked, Do you see, O believer, by Hezekiah's example, that you must come humbly before the Lord whom you are trusting and obeying and believing and following. You must approach him in a humble way. Why? He is God and you are not. He will detect false humility in an instant. It's like the Pharisee and the tax collector. I do this. I do that. I'm great, Lord. Amen. You got to take care of me because I do this and I do that and I'm really good. The tax collector came pounding his chest in mourning and say, Have mercy on me, a sinner. Who was made right before God, Jesus says? The tax collector. Humility is essential, and yet I hear much naming and claiming in believers in today's church. Take note. Hezekiah did not say, says here in your word that you have to deliver us, so do it. I name it, I claim it. I claim that scripture over Jerusalem. No, he did not do that. He will not listen to demands, beloved, but to humble requests from he who is God. Humble requests to he who is God. Those who will hear. Do you see by Hezekiah's example that when you love and obey and cling to the Lord and approach him humbly, he will respond? We'll look at his response in the next lesson. If you are like Hezekiah, if you can stand right next to that scripture and say, yeah, that's me from 2 Kings 18. And you go to him and you show him the threats and lies and blasphemies of the enemy, Satan. Surely he will answer and surely he will deliver you. Do you rely on your own strength? Do you rely on man's ways, man's wisdom? I see it in the church all the time today. I do not see many who trust in the Lord's strength alone, knowing only he can deliver. It's no wonder that so few are unable to approach him.
They know they're sinning against him, and yet they go before him, they think, and tell him what to do while they stand at a distance from him, separated from him by their sin, from Isaiah 59, 1 and 2. He will not respond to such entreaties. Verses 5 through 7. So the servants came to Isaiah, and Isaiah said, he didn't have to pray. Do you notice? He didn't even have to pray. The Lord knew. The Lord had already said, okay, these two are, these folks are coming to you. Tell them this. Do not be afraid because of the words you have heard, with which the servants of the king of Assyria have blasphemed me. I will put a spirit in him, and he will run back to his land. And when he's there, I'll make sure that he's killed by the sword in his own land. We will see that it happened just as the Lord said in the last few verses of Isaiah 37, verses 36 through 38. The Lord speaks only the truth. He will never tell you he's going to do something and not do it. He is truth the embodiment of truth. He does not change. He is always the same. Verses 8 through 13. Now this is interesting. The Rabshake goes back to his king who is fighting against Libna, which is about six miles north of Jerusalem. It is an unfortified city, but they're putting up a fight. For he had heard that the king had left Lachish, where he had first come from. So the king has moved on to fight somewhere else. And he heard the threats of the king of Cush. And then he sent messengers to Hezekiah with the same threats, blasphemies, and lies as he had spoken outside of the wall of Jerusalem at the upper pool. So, why? Why did he send that letter? He had already made the threats. He had already spoken the lies. He had already issued the blasphemies. So, if King Hezekiah and Jerusalem fell into the hands of Assyria. They gave up and said, our Lord can't rescue us, and you have us, we're goners, and do with us as you will. Then the rest of the unfortified cities of Ju Judah would fall because they had no king. That might be enough to scare away the king of Cush. At the very least, Assyria's army would be freed up from battling Judah and be able to put all their resources toward battling the king of Cush. That's why he applied a little more pressure. As I say, the same threats were in his letter as were said by him at the wall. Do not let your God in whom you trust deceive you, saying Jerusalem will not be given into the hand of the king of Assyria. Your God is a deceiver and a liar. That's blasphemy. Behold, you have heard what Assyria has done to the other lands, destroying them. What makes you think you will be spared? Did the gods of those destroyed nations deliver them? Uh, show me their kings. Again, these were lies, all lies. And again, the Lord was blasphemed. I tell you the truth, just like the rab shake and Satan and all his children, they can do nothing but lie and blaspheme and threaten. If you are right with God, you trust and obey and follow him alone and you are filled with his spirit as Jesus Christ commands. 
in Luke 24, 49 and Acts 1, 4 through 5, you will stand against all of that. They can't do anything but lie and blaspheme, for there is no truth in them at all. How sad that so many of Satan's children are in pews and puppets of today's church, saying, did the Lord really say this was sin or that was sin? Oh, that was for then. Now it's all right. For you to sin in that way against the Lord because it's not sin anymore. They call evil good and good evil. If anyone stands by this word, they are mocked. That is a sign that they are Satan's children and not the Lord. So such ones were among the believers in Corinth, so Paul warned them in 2 Corinthians 11.13, for such men are false apostles, deceitful workers, disguising themselves as apostles of Christ. Verse 14, no wonder, for even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. I tell you, you will not be able to discern who is who unless you are filled with the Lord and you will detect in a moment the lie, threats, and blasphemy of the enemy. In verse 14, Hezekiah didn't say, oh no, they were going to do it. No, he said, he took the letter from the hand of the messengers, read it, went up to the house of the Lord and spread it out. I can't tell you how many times I've done this said, this is what the enemy is trying to say, Lord, about you. This is what he's threatening us with. But worst of all, this is what he's saying, to blaspheme your holy name. Here, here it is. And then pray, you, our Lord, you, our God, you are enthroned above the cherubim. You are the God. There is no other God. You alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth, you have made heaven and earth. You are the God. You alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth, you have made heaven and earth. You go and you praise him and tell him, Oh, I know, Lord, that you are great. I know you are the only God. I know that you created everything that is, all the kingdoms of the earth. And you are their God, whether they acknowledge you or not. So he says, incline your ear and hear, bend down, O Lord. Open your eyes, O Lord, and see and listen to all the words of Sennacherib who sent them to reproach. That is blaspheme. The living God, he always addresses the Lord as living because he knows that he is. He is not a God of wood. He is not a God of stone. He is not a God of metal. He is not a God that is from the imagination of man. He is not a God whose root is the sin nature we are all born with as children of Adam. He is the God of heaven, holy, righteous, blameless, perfect in all his ways. And who with one finger is able to destroy the enemy. Hallelujah. So he says, yes, just what it says in this letter. The king of Assyria, the kings of Assyria have devastated all the countries in their lands and have cast their gods into the fire, for they were not gods. They were the work of men's hands, wood and stone. So they have destroyed them, but they can't destroy you, O Lord. You're not made of wood and stone. Now, Verse 20, O Lord our God, deliver us from his hand. 
that all the kingdoms of the earth would know that you alone, O Lord, are God. Do you know that's why Jesus commands you to be filled with the Holy Spirit? So that the change in you is so extreme that everyone has to agree that you cannot be what you are except that God is in you, large and in charge. The purpose is that the world would know that God the Father sent God the Son to do exactly what was needed in human hearts. First, rescue them from God's wrath. Second, reconcile them to God. And third, what happened when he was glorified after he died and rose and ascended, sitting at the right hand of the Father pouring out his spirit so that we can be his witnesses here, not witness for him, but be his witnesses, be so much like him that they see Christ. That is something only God can do. And the purpose is so that they will know that Jesus is real and God is real and they comprise the one true God. That's the purpose. See, and you can't fulfill it. When you say, oh, no, I don't need that. I don't need to be filled with the Holy Spirit, beloved. You can't fulfill your purpose. You cannot fulfill what he prayed in John 17. When you're filled full, that you fulfill that prayer. So this spreading out of the letter, this saying, you are God and no other, praising him and glorifying him and saying, now, Lord, here are the threats. Here are the lies. Here is the blasphemy. Deliver us from his hand so he and everyone else will know that you alone, O oh Lord, our God. And I tell you the truth, many of today's believers worship the God of self, which is a product of the sin nature something of our own making. We worship our own lusts and passions and desires. But those who are Christ have crucified the sin nature with its lusts and desires. Galatians 5.24. Have you done that? I don't see much evidence in the church today. So you cannot be his witness here. You are still sinning against him because I know before I was filled with the Spirit, I still sinned against him. He will not hear the prayers of sinners, be they sinning believers or people in the world. He hears those who obey and love and cling to him and trust him. His hearts are pure and clean. Those he responds to. See, the God of self is at the root of all the worship of the false gods that are in today's church, the God of prosperity, the God of success. I could go on and on. The God of what it feels, if it feels good, do it. The God of if it feels good, do it. Jesus Christ is here to deliver you from your sin nature today. If you will pray a prayer of repentance, which I have told you if you're sinning, it's the only one he'll hear, he will certainly respond. He will know if you are sincerely repenting or just looking for a quick fix for your situation. As I said, Nothing is hidden from the eyes of the one with whom we have to do from Hebrews 4.13. He knows your heart completely, Jesus says, in John 2.24-25. through 25. He is waiting for you to obey his commands. Stay and wait. 
Will you obey him? He will certainly deliver you from your sin nature and much more as you walk through this life. Lord, may believers in today's church believe you today. For certainly we will see in the next session that the Lord did exactly what Isaiah said he would do. May they be delivered. I am praying for deliverance for your church. I pray it in your name. Amen. The fields are white and the workers are few, but the Lord of the harvest is faithful and true. He'll send forth more workers to accomplish his plan and pour out his spirit.